Hello, everybody. This is Craig. And I'm coming to you on a chilly Wednesday night. This is a live classroom session, but you guys must all be busy because nobody showed up again. So I'm just going to tape what I wanted to say and skip the questions I had for you. And we will, uh, I'll, at least there'll be something to post, something for you to look at. I sensed last week that there were some issues with confidence intervals. And um, I'm not getting a lot of questions about this stuff. So I decided to put together this and talk more about it because your CT6 project had to do with confidence intervals. So here we go. What is a confidence interval? Well, first of all, we've learned a lot about making point estimates of certain parameters. Uh, the mean, standard deviation, uh, population proportion. But sometimes we, as we venture away from descriptive statistics towards infer inferential, let me get the word right, inferential statistics, where we are making inferences about the population based on a sample, well, then sometimes we need more than just an estimate of the population parameter. And a confidence interval is one way to do that. A confidence interval, and here's my definition, is a range of values with a certain level of confidence, and that's our 90 or 95 or 99% confidence level, a range of values that with this certain level of confidence contain the population parameter of interest. So we're going to draw a sample from the population. We're going to calculate a sample mean, but then we want to say, you know, is this really representative of the population mean? And confidence intervals give us a way to say, well, okay, you know, I drew this sample mean and the sample standard deviation. And from that information, I'm going to create this range of values. And with a certain confidence level, say 95% confident, I'm confident that the true population mean falls within this range. That's what confidence intervals are all about. We can do them for means. That is most typical, we'll make calculate a sample mean. But we can also do them for proportions. And you are asked to do this in your um, CT assignment for week six. OK, so <clears throat> excuse me, let's, uh, let's proceed on. And I want to first, let's see, how do I do this? Make a new page. Did I get a new page? I did. OK. I want to first talk about <clears throat> something that I showed you before once already. But I want to do it again, because sometimes talking through it works a little better. All right. That's a pretty horrible normal curve, but that's OK. Let's say this represents our population. And of course, right in the middle is the population mean. And we use the symbol mu to represent the population mean. And again, you know, here, here's a box. Here's our population. Two, two, two. And there's lots of pieces of data in it. They form the population. Well, what we do with statistics is it's very difficult to find out what the value of all the members of the population are. So we do sampling. We say, OK, I'm going to go in here. I'm going to grab some values. And we call that a sample. And from that sample, I'm going to calculate something. I'm going to calculate x bar, which we call the sample mean. And let's just say, for the sake of argument, in this example, the sample mean is equal to, oh, let's just say 42. We'll also calculate a sample standard deviation based on that sample. And let's say in this case, I had 
pulled out 200 elements forming that sample. It looks like only three, but it's really 200. Okay, now let's say that the population, we secretly knew some stuff. Pop you, that's not how you spell it. Population, let's say that the population mean See, that one's 42, so let's say it's equal to 40. So I can write that in now here. There, our population mean is 40. And now let's see, um, of course, I could also get a population standard deviation, and I'm not going to write down a number for this one, but that's what sigma is, the population standard deviation. And I don't know how big n was in my population. I, I don't know, it looks like, oh, if that's 200, there must be a thousand in there or something, but that doesn't matter. Okay, so we've got the actual population, but you know, we don't know this in most cases, right? Yeah, we rarely do, because that's, if we knew these things about everything in the population, we wouldn't have to do statistics, but we don't. We only draw a sample and we're going to make estimates about the population from that. So let's see, what do we do? Let's, uh, let's put in our value. Let's see, our sample standard deviation. Let's see, let's call this 42 right there. So let's say there's our 42. And, you know, we estimated that this is the population mean, but we were a little bit off, weren't we? Well, a confidence interval allows us to do this we can make a range of values. And let's say my values range all the way from, oh, I don't know, it looks like 39 or something. And let's see if that's 39, that's uh, three. So this would have to be, you know, out here to 45 or something. There's my confidence interval. And I might call that, if I calculate it, it a certain way, a 95% confidence interval. Okay, and we're learning or we learned that we calculate confidence intervals. How do we do that? Well, let's see, confidence interval. We have several ways to do it based on whether we know the population standard deviation and how large the sample is. But in the most general case, we're going to take the only estimate of the population mean we have, that's our point estimate, it's the sample mean. And we're gonna say plus or minus something called the T statistics, statistic. And we're gonna do T of alpha over two, and we'll come back to that, times the sample, standard deviation, divided by the square root of the sample size. There's how we calculate our confidence interval. Now, many times, no, I won't even go there now. Okay, so let's say we calculated, um, yeah, this, this is the most general version, but sometimes if we happen to know, I'll put this down, if, Sigma is known, we'll come back to that, this again and again. Then we can write our confidence interval a little bit differently. We can say it's our X bar. Um, plus or minus the Z statistic. We know about that. Z alpha over two times the population over the square root of sample size. That makes things a little bit easier. So let's see, now this, this Z alpha over two is where it, the value we choose comes from what level of confidence we wanna have in our, our confidence interval. As we choose bigger values, of Z alpha over two, 
our confidence interval grows. Our Z value grows and our confidence interval grows. Let me jump over to a different sheet here. One that I, oh, oh where'd it go? Oh, maybe it's here, I just gotta scroll. There it is. I posted this sheet and I said, what I've done here is summarize most of chapter seven. Here's the Z values. Let's see if we have a confidence level of, let's say 90%, the Z alpha over two we will use in our equation is 1.645. It's that simple. We will never use anything other than these four common ones. And there's the Z alpha over two values we use. Again, as our confidence level goes up, the Z value goes up. And because the Z value is going up, the width of the confidence interval increases. And it kind of makes sense. Well, let me draw another one in here. Let's see, let's call this one. The 90% confidence interval. There we go, yep. Because this plus or minus part, if this number is getting bigger, our Z alpha over two, well then the confidence interval is getting wider. Okay, so far so good. Let's say we drew another sample. This time we pulled those guys. And let's say this time, oh, we didn't pull quite as many values, 150 this time. Uh, we would have some value of our sample standard deviation and we would calculate an X bar. And let's say this time we found it to be, oh, let's see, that would be 30. Let's call it 37. Hmm, where's 37? It's down here somewhere, right? 37. And if we drew our 95% confidence interval about it, it might look something like that. Well, what happened this time? Did we encompass the true value of the population parameter of interest? Does our confidence interval contain the population mean? No, it does not. Unfortunately, it does not. No, this was our 95% confidence interval. Well, if we would have drawn a 100 or a 99% confidence interval, then it might have encompassed it, but our 99% confidence interval did not. And that's gonna happen once in a while, right? That's statistics. How often is it going to happen? 5% of the time. That's how statistics works. It's not perfect. It's why we never have exact answers when we're drawing a sample and making inferences about the population. Okay, so confidence interval. We'll use our sample mean. We'll use the T value and we'll talk more about it in a minute. Times a sample standard deviation divided by the square root of sample size. Or if we know the sample, I mean the population standard deviation, then we can, re, we can not use the sample standard deviation. We can use the population standard deviation and the Z statistic instead of the T statistic. Okay, I wanna go back one time now, back to this document that we just looked at. And at the bottom of this was what I called a confidence interval map. And what it did is showed you how to make confidence intervals. How to make a confidence intervals for a population proportion or for a population mean. Let's do the simple one for a population proportion. Well, all you do, P represents the proportion. The confidence interval is P either plus or minus the Z statistic, and that's Z alpha over two times the square root, and then inside the square root is the proportion times one minus the proportion divided by N. We'll show you that in just a minute, it's pretty simple. 
The little more difficult side is what we do when we're after the population mean. And again, we just talked about this. Do we know the population standard deviation or is it unknown? The simple case, when it's known, then we can calculate our confidence interval by taking our sample mean, that's x bar, plus or minus z, that's z alpha over 2 actually, this author didn't show it as z alpha over 2, but it is, times the standard population standard deviation divided by square root of sample size. We went over that. However, what if we don't know the standard deviation? Well, we talked about that one. That's the most general case. Then we take, we don't know the population standard deviation. Then we take our sample mean, x bar, plus or minus the t statistic, and it's t alpha over 2, times the sample standard deviation, s, divided by the square root of sample size. And calculate finding the t value, we need what's called the degrees of freedom, which is simply equal to the sample size n minus 1. And we have to go look in the table for that t value, but it's not a difficult calculation. We just have to know which version we, where we can go. There's one other thing I'm going to suggest, and I'll get to that, but it has to do with using the t value in this equation versus replacing it with the z value. Because if our sample size is quite large, and in the, sh I think at one place I suggested to you that sample size should be greater than a thousand, but I've changed it now. And yeah, I think it was right here where I said it. I think right here I had written in thousand, but I've changed this document and I'm saying if we have more than, our sample size is more than a hundred, we can replace t with the corresponding z value. And we'll go over that in just a minute. So let's go back to our picture. Yeah, here's the most general case where we use the t value and the sample standard deviation, the sample mean. If we know the population standard deviation, we can use our sample mean plus or minus the z value times sample standard deviation, I'm sorry, population standard deviation over the square root of sample size. And the caveat goes with this one. And we'll, well, we'll come back to that. Let's jump over now to a spreadsheet that I just modified and built for us tonight. Here we go. Here's that modification I wanted to talk about it. Talk about. Let's make this thing go away. Okay. Hello. Boy, I hope I'm recording. Is my microphone on? Says it's on. Oh, yeah. It appears to be on. All right. So confidence interval for a mean when the standard population standard deviation sigma is known. There's the equation. We take our sample mean plus or minus the z alpha over 2 times the population standard deviation divided by the square root of sample size. If we don't know what the population standard deviation is, well then we replace population standard deviation with sample standard deviation and we don't use the z statistic, we use the t. Unless we have a sample size that's greater than 100, then we can replace the t statistic with the z statistic, which makes that equation a little simpler. And finally, here's our confidence interval for proportion. We always use the z statistic. The population interval is going to be p either plus or minus the z statistic times the quantity, uh, times the square root of p times 1 minus p, those are proportion, divided by n. Okay, let's look at an example. I've got one here. Uh, boy, this one's fitting. I got some ratings on mall Santas. And ratings for Santa range from one being good to five being bad. And apparently these people were asked um, to rate their mall Santas. And there's 
there's, there's 50 people who did this and they each gave a rating. And then, let's see, I got to spell calculate, right? I didn't there, did I? No. Make things a little more. Calculate. Perfectionist. It's overrated, but I still like to do it. Okay, so first of all, I want to calculate the 90% confidence interval of the mall Santa rating mean. Okay, so I want a confidence interval about the mean of the Santa ratings. So I need to calculate some statistics. First of all, we need the mean. That's X bar, right? Yes, that's our sample mean. How did I calculate it? Well, I simply took the average of these values, which go from, I didn't really need to say that those should be absolute cell references. Whoopsie, I'm still not getting it right. Trying. There we go. I was hitting F4 there, by the way. The average of these values is, well, that's equal to 3.1. That's the mean rating. So how good is this mall Santa? Ooh, not so hot. What's the sample standard deviation? That's S, sample standard deviation. Well, here's my equation, stdev.s, and there's my range. Let's see if I go into edit mode there. Yep, covering all the mall Santas down to row 57. Sample standard deviation of 1.4, and I had 50 values. See, I, I used the count function to see how many values there were. And degrees of freedom, we learned that that's just equal to n minus 1. So I took the value in 11 minus 1, 49. T alpha over 2, I'm going to need that because in this case, let's see, do I have over 100 values? No, I do not. I have 50. So I can't use this little caveat right here. I can't replace T alpha over 2 with Z alpha over 2. I have to use this equation. I'm going to need X bar. We just got that. That's the sample mean. I'm going to need the sample standard deviation. We calculated that real simply. It's 1.4. And I'm going to need T alpha over 2. But how do I find it? Well, I also need N. We know that. That's 50. OK. So let's see, what do I do? I, I think I put something down here. Yes, I did. Finding T alpha over two. Okay, we have, we're looking for a 90% confidence interval. I think I said that up front, didn't I? Yes, 90% confidence interval. How do we do it? Well, if our confidence interval is the 90%, alpha is equal to 10% or 0.1. And alpha over two is 0.5. And if you just keep this in mind and remember how to do this, it's real simple. You go into your R ta table of T values, and we're going to do this. I'm going to show you. And we look up where A e alpha equals 0 0.05. Now, yes, we calculated it as zero, alpha over 2 equals 0 0.05. And we're doing this because the table has the probability all on one end of the distribution. And since we're doing a confidence interval, we're interested in it, interested in either end of the normal distribution. And thus, we have to split this value in half. And so what we do that by using our t table that we are given by using, we calculate, sorry, let me back up. We calculate alpha and alpha over two, and then we go into the T table and we let A equals the value we calculated, 0.05, and I'll show you that. Now we're looking for a value of 1.677. Let's see if we can find it. I've got our T table here. I hope I do. Well, I'm pretty sure I do. I did before. There they are. All right, here's our T table. And again, the reason we have to use 0.05 and not alpha equaling 0.1 is because 
this table puts all the area in the upper tail and we have to split it between upper and lower to make a confidence interval. So what we did is we said uh, confidence interval is 90. That means alpha equals 0.1 and alpha over two equals 0.05. And what we do then is go into this table at the alpha equals 0.05 value. Now we're gonna look at the intersection of this alpha value of 0.05 and a degrees of freedom. How many did we have? We had 49 degrees of freedom, so I have to scroll down. How do I scroll down? Hmm. Let me try the mouse. Oh, that works, okay. So I'm looking for 49, must be on the next page. Here it comes. There we go, my 0.05 value is there, 49. There's the value of 1.677. That is our T alpha over two value. Very good. Once again, we had 90% confidence interval. That gives a alpha of 0.1 and alpha over two of 0.05. And to use the t-table, we take that 0.05 and look for the appropriate 0.05 column. Even though it says alpha, we're really doing alpha over two of 0.05. Now we had to find <clears throat> degrees of freedom, which is uh, n minus one, <clears throat> excuse me, or 50 minus one, 49. And we go find that value in the table. Where's the right column? There it is. There's our value of T alpha over two of 1.677. All right, we're back. So that's how I got T alpha over two is 1.677. Now we simply need to use this equation to calculate our confidence interval. And let's see, here I said now, I didn't write it out, but to get the lower value, that's gonna be X bar minus T alpha over two times S over square root of N. And the upper confidence level, the upper limit is going to be X bar plus T alpha over two times S over the square root of N. So I've done this equation twice. Here it is, I'm gonna hit uh, edit mode, scroll up a little bit so we can see everything. What did I do? I took E9, which should be X bar, it is, there's E9, X bar. Uh, let's see if I want the lower limit, I'm gonna subtract, there's the subtraction, times this quantity, three things multiplied together. E10 should be T alpha over two, whoopsie, E10. Where's E10? Oh, that's my sample standard deviation. Oh, I missed, E14, sorry. E14, there's my T alpha over two, times E10, my sample standard deviation, divided by the square root of sample size, E11. There's my equation in Excel format. Now you don't have to do it, it was a pretty simple equation. You can do them by hand, but I'm in Excel. I like to do everything in Excel. It doesn't make math errors, as long as you write the equation right. And some of these equations get a little tricky. Uh, this one, yeah, it's got some tricks. If you would have forgotten these parentheses, you, you would have uh, done something incorrect. What do you have? No, left to right multiplication division would always come first. I think you would have been okay without them, but regardless, you gotta be careful with Excel, order of operations. Okay, so there's my upper limit. What's my lower limit? Well, remember this one was started out with sample size minus, the other one better start out with sample size plus. And there it is, E9 sample size plus E14, uh, T alpha over two times E10, sample standard deviation divided by the square root of sample size E11. Very good. So there is my upper and lower limit and I like to write confidence intervals this way. There's a lower side, 2.77, and an upper side, 3.34. All I did is type in the two values that I had, that I calculated earlier. That's it. That's how to calculate a confidence interval. In this case, 
we had us we did not know the population standard deviation so we had to use the population standard deviation unknown version we did not have more than a hundred a sample size greater than or equal to 100 we had 50 so we couldn't replace the t statistic with z and uh, there it is the easiest case is when you know the population standard deviation and then we can just use this simple version the z values we know those from oh that one sheet that we've been looking at today i have those z alpha over two values listed based on confidence level Okay, let's move on to the final one. And again, you're gonna to have to, I just moved that, didn't I? You're gonna to have to use this in your CT work. You were asked for a couple of confidence intervals, or at least one. No, I think there were two. Yeah. Let's see, where are there? Here's our assignment six. Whoopsie, I couldn't do that. I have to do this. Sorry, folks. Be with you there now we got it here's our module six and uh, critical thinking assignment says first of all determine the point estimate and then the 95 percent confidence interval for mu seven the average attitude towards springdale mall so you know how to go into your data and find where the average attitude is for springfield mall you'll have to calculate the average x bar is what you're calculating you're estimating the population parameter but you're only going to get the sample estimate based on our survey and then you're going to build a 95 percent confidence interval around it just as we did previously however do you have more than 100 values if you do you can replace the t statistic with the z statistic otherwise you can't we don't know the population standard deviation no so we can't use the we have no population standard deviation to use we have to calculate one from our sample simple enough then we'll repeat that for two other things the average attitudes towards the other two malls okay let's see then here we go this is it. Pi stands for proportion, the population proportion. Yes, in problem two, we're going to look at variable 26, which is the gender of the respondent. And we're going to calculate how many are males. So there's only males or females. Somehow you got to count them up and figure out the proportion that are male. And then we'll build the confidence interval about that proportion. And we're, I'm going to show you how to do that in just a second. And then we're going to do a second proportion, this one on marital status. I think marital status has two things. You're either married or you're single or other. You're either married or you're single or other. Yeah, that's right. So again, you've got to calculate the proportion, how many of those people are single or other, and build a confidence interval about that proportion. The last part um while i'm here because i don't think i'm coming back here i'm going to look up the page in the text nobody seems to get this one but it's really not that difficult in section 8.4 it tells you how to calculate this value and there's two good examples or there's a good example or two of them example 8.8 .8 and 8.9 are going to be very similar to what you do in this question I'll leave it at that. That's section 8.4. Okay, so let's go back to calculating confidence intervals about a proportion. Let's see. We were supposed to calculate a proportion about the mall Santa rating equal to 2. So recall, the Santas were rated from 1 to 5. And here I've listed that. Santa rating one, two, three, four, five. And I want to know how many are in each of those. So you can see I used the count if function. Again, I don't know why I have all these um, absolute cell references in here. I don't need them because things aren't moving. Nope. There's my. Oh. 
there's my simple equation. You give a range and you say, okay, count them up as long as they're equal to this parameter. As long as you're a one, and I did one there because, why? Because this is my rating one row. And it said, there's eight ones in out of those 50. And then I changed it in the second one to be, again, the count if using two and count if using three to find the number of values that I have for each of the Santa ratings. I used the sum function and just sum these up and sure enough, it got 50. Uh, gave me confidence that sure enough, I found 50 values. And then I calculated proportions. How did I do that? Well, you know how to do that. We simply take this count of eight and divided it by the total number. That's all I did, H10 over H15. Uh, yeah, there it is. And I got these proportions. And again, if there's only values one through five and my counts are right, these proportions should sum to one and they do. So we are interested in these guys right here. We want a confidence interval for mall Santa rating equal to two. So we are interested in this piece of data right there. That's key for us. Let's see, what's our, our proportion gonna look like or our confidence interval? We're gonna take that proportion, 0.24. We're gonna add or subtract the Z value of alpha over two. And what is our Z alpha over two? Well, we can go right back to that. Oh, let's just go back there. We can go right back to our document here and see for the 90% confidence interval, Z alpha over two is 1.645. Is that what I did? Let's hope. Yes, it is. Z alpha over two, 1.645. No equation there. I just wrote it in. Although Excel has functions, that'll give you that, but... Uh, we don't need to do that. Okay, now what I did here is again, just like we did before, I calculated an upper confidence limit and a lower confidence limit. Maybe it should have been lower confidence interval limit. I don't know. But I split this equation into two parts because it's kind of complicated. Uh, this square root of P times P, one minus P over N in Excel gets a little hairy. So I just did that portion. And here it is. It's the square root of I11. Oh, let's put it in edit mode. I11, which is my proportion, yep, times 1 minus I11 divided by H15. That's my, that's N, sample size. And I wrapped that all up in parentheses and said, take the square root of that whole thing. So it's just everything under, including the square root in the, equation. So my last step, I'm going to have to take P plus Z times that big thing and Z minus Z times that big thing. And that's what I did here. There it is. My lower confidence interval limit is equal to, well, it's equal to the proportion. That's what it says. Minus H17, which is my Z value, Z alpha over two times everything under the uh, uh, square root, which I put in H19, as I just explained. There's the lower confidence limit, and here is just the plus version, uh, P plus the Z value times everything under the square root. And there is my confidence interval. Oh, oh, I was editing and I just copied here. I didn't do that right. We can fix that. This should be 0 0.141. Apologize to those of you who are looking ahead and said, how the heck is he gonna get that? He's not. There we go, there's our confidence interval. Now let's interpret these confidence intervals. We didn't, we didn't do the final step. What do we say about these? Well, let's, let's do this one. We can say with 90% confidence that the true value of the proportion of mall Santa ratings that are equal to two, if you sampled the entire population of everyone who sat on this mall Santa's lap this year, 
that would be a lot of people, we can say with 90% confidence that that value, that proportion, proportion of ratings that are equal to two is going to fall between 0.14 and 0.34 or 0.141 and 0.339. We estimate the mean is going to be 0.24, but our confidence interval ranges from 0.14 to 0.34. Likewise, let's interpret our the, the mall Santa rating mean. The mean value, we said it was 3.1. Well, again, from our confidence interval, we can say we are 90% confident that the true value of Santa's mean rating, and we don't know Santa's mean rating. We just have a sample. We're estimating it to be 3.1, but we're 90% confident because we did the statistics that the true value of the population parameter. The true value of the population mean falls between 2.77 and 3.43. That's how we interpret confidence intervals. Okay, folks. Well, um, that's all I wanted to do tonight. I hope this has been helpful. Uh, if you get stuck on any of those ME problems, just give me a holler. I'm happy to help you out. Uh, we're on to week, I know, we're on to week seven now, and we've turned from confidence intervals to uh, hypothesis testing, which is very similar to um, confidence intervals. We're, again, um, doing a very similar process, or we're asking a very similar question, but we're calculating it in a significantly different type of way. Um, if you have questions about those, again, just holler. People send me in notes and they say, Craig, I don't get this problem. How come they did this here and not this? And I'm happy to either create a little video like this one or to create one just for you or to give you a phone call or I'll just email you and say, yeah, they used that because blah, blah, blah. Whatever works simple, whatever I think is best for our class, I'll, I'll do one of those. All right, everybody. Well, everybody talking to myself, but hey, you're going to go watch this, I hope. Good luck, everyone. Bye-bye.